And we are remaining with that story by changing gears a bit to look at how the developments surrounding the speaker actually affect the ANC as a brand, especially at such a crucial time of elections, as well as expectant uh, legal implications arising from the saga. Let's now extend a warm welcome. We are expecting Mr. Mpumelelo Zegalala, who is a legal analyst. But we do have with us Mr. Solimueng, who is a brand expert and a member of Action SA's Fix. SA team for international relations. Uh, Solly, a very good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us. So talk to us about how could these corruption allegations against the speaker affect the image as well as credibility of the ruling party, the ANC, less than months away uh, from the national polls at the back of the Pala Pala scandal, Pravin Gordon's SAA uh, mystery deal followed by his swift resignation amongst many dents in the ruling party's uh, structures. Yeah, thank you very much, Alice. You know, it seems to me that the ANC hasn't learned much or it knows something that the rest of us don't know. Because usually when you found when you get found doing something wrong, you quickly hide or you apologize or you you know, you stop. But the ANC keeps going, it doesn't stop. I mean I, I'm just worried also about Mabusam Simama, who left the party very briefly, and apparently he was promised that they wouldn't be wrong, you know, all the implicated people in their lists, and these things happen. So the, we can see more and more of these ANC leaders getting into trouble or stop getting re, being revealed about them, instead of the ANC, for the sake of keeping a good image, saying to them, step aside, we can't deal with this, and we saw we have elections coming, they seem to be going all over the place, not being sure what steps to take. I mean, it's they are caught up between what's good for the ANC and what's good for Ceramica. And obviously, what what's good for the ANC seems to win each time. Mm. Let's talk about it from a government perspective, Solly. Look, from a branding perspective, right, what strategies do you think the government, uh, you know, the ruling party then could employ to mitigate the damage that is caused by these allegations while also maintaining, or should I say, a salvaging public trust? Yeah, look, everybody, just people who know reputation management know that the rule number one of reputation management is if you've done something wrong, accept, accept admit it as early as possible, say how you got there, what you're going to put in place to make sure it doesn't happen again. But the ANC never gets it right. It needs to first, you can't just apologize. You can't keep putting plaster over a wound that is festering. I think South Africans want to see there are consequences when people do wrong, irrespective of their rent identity, their rank and identity. They, there are consequences for South Africa because people are tired of being led by leaders who behave as if the rules are not made for them. So the first thing the ANC should do really is ask this lady, you can't be in that position. It's not good for the image of our parliament, but they're not doing that. Mm. All right, we do have Mpumelelo Zegala, a legal analyst there who's joining us. Mpumelelo, as always, a very good evening. So I want you to take us through the process of seeking an interdict against a pending arrest as pursued by the Speaker. Is this a common practice or legal strategy in cases of corruption? Also, why interdict a process that could potentially vindicate you? Mm. Uh, uh, good afternoon to no, so, to your listeners. Well, I think they may have taken a pattern from what the president has done when he was being privately prosecuted. However, the facts are a bit different in this case. The president was being prosecuted by a private individual, this time it's the NPA, the official body that prosecutes individuals on a normal basis. So if you go to court on an urgent basis and say to court, drop everything that you are doing, focus on my matter, the court is going to say, let's look at whether, whether your matter is, is even urgent. In this case, I would beg not. Reason being, there are firstly alternative remedies which are available to you. Go to court through the criminal process. The criminal procedure act is there to, to make sure that you are vindicated to in time. So there are other alternative remedies that are there. Secondly, are you going to suffer irreparable harm? The answer is no. Number of individuals have been dismissed of work, have been laid off work of enough to take leave. And it doesn't mean that by the virtue of you being prosecuted, you are now being found guilty. If there's anything untowards in the investigations, in the collection of evidence, there's space and time for you to be able to dispute that. Allow the process as it is now in order for the process to be well ventilated in front of a court and not for you to seek ways of trying to collect and see what does the state have against me before you go through the prosecution that is there. So for me, I think the chances of the application succeeding are a bit slim.
Mm, Mbumala, let's backtrack a little bit. I mean, maybe talk to us about some of the key arguments by the speaker's legal team in regards to the legality of the search as well as seizure that was conducted at a home by the NPA's ID. I think that they're challenging whether it was authentic or not. They are saying even the manner in which it was done, we do not believe that it was done in a proper and procedural way, meaning that there may have been rights according to the constitution that were infringed in terms of the Criminal Procedure Act also. That's leading to them saying the information, if collected in an improper manner, that evidence cannot be utilized or used against me. However, they might be missing one point. Only a court of law can make that determination. It's not the prosecution which is going to do that. So as a prosecutor, you say, I'm going to court with all the might that I have, with all the information and evidence that I have, so that I can be able to win. It's, it is the court that will make the determination whether it was collected correctly or incorrectly. So to raise it now is a bit premature. The time and space for that is going to come only at a later stage. And it can't be that it's going to be the only thing in which is going to say, then say to the court, we are not going to allow this arrest to go forward. But NPA on the other side may come back and say, we are regularized or we are appointed to make sure that we bring this type of prosecutions on behalf of South Africans. In this case, we have investigated, we have prima facie evidence that we need you to, to answer to. This is the process and the forum that we do on a daily basis. So why do you want to deflect from it or why do you want a special sort of notice and attention when it comes to your matter? Go through the normal process in a step manner in which all other individuals do. Mm. Soli, let's go back uh, to your point about accountability and putting plaster on festering wounds. Baby, take us through how the Speaker's uh, decision then to grant herself the special leave could potentially uh, have on her brand as well as credibility in the short and long term, bearing in mind that she's no stranger to controversy. You'll remember her insurrection comments uh, during the July uh, riots and uh, that controversial undocumented individual that was brought back to South Africa. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, a lot of people know that this lady, the speaker, has 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 survived a lot of things that normal people would not have survived in the past. She keeps being deployed into key state institutions despite everything that gets that she gets accused of. So, I think that first of all, people are saying it's not up to her to decide to go on special leave. They, the parliament must meet, make look at the facts before them and make a determination that she cannot be in that position. It's not up to her to decide uh, that she's going to go on special leave. So, and and but, but there the must be firm action. I think what the end, the fact that the NPA has decided to open a case means that it has something in front of it that it could not put aside. I mean, we know that this NPA is has been playing tricks in, in, when it when it involves powerful leaders in politics, especially ANC leaders, you know, they decided to go after this woman. Why are they going after her? They must have something that she, even she cannot uh, run away from. And I think she must just step, away, step aside. South Africa, she must think not over the ANC only, of South Africa and step aside. That's what should happen. Mm, but Soli, let's bear in mind that she's not yet been found guilty or even charged at yeah, uh, this yeah. stage. Look, yeah. Mpumelelo, in closing, yeah. I'll give you a chance uh, there, Soli, very quickly. Mpumelelo, I mean, yeah. considering the political context then of this case, what challenges might we see arising in ensuring a free as well as fair trial outside uh, the court of public opinion? And how might the outcome even impact public perceptions of the rule of law and accountability in our country? Mm. I think in this case it's going to be adherence to the applicable rules, which is the Constitution and the Criminal Procedure Act. Up until now, I think they've been able to comply, and that's the state. And if there are any instances of non-compliance, the only place in which you can raise it is when you have been charged. I would have rather concentrated on making sure that if you want to charge me, give me those summons, call me to court, let me apply for bail so that I'm not going to spend even one single night in jail. Probably the chances of bail being granted are going to be huge. Then allow to stand the process up until it has come to an end. On the other side, though, remember that she, it, it, the speaker does come from the African National Congress, which has a step-aside rule, which may kick in in this case when charges have been laid. She, they may come back and say, you occupy such an important position in, in the South African Parliament. Please step aside for a little bit while you deal with this dark cloud which is over your head. Again, it would be up to them within their prerogative. And I, I think they would be justified in this case to say, when attend to instances in which you have been charged, not allegations, but there are charges against you, then stay there up until you can come back at a later stage. I think that won't be in time, though, up until this administration rises, because it's only on, on the 29th of Ma May 
in which then parliament will close. So I think uh, the, the most important process here is this one. Follow the normal processes as they are listed down so that you can be able to protect your rights adequately. All right. Uh, very quickly, Soli, uh, in closing as well, I mean, uh, in relation to what I said earlier about her not being charged and found guilty, uh, maybe just talk to us about also how then government at this particular time can take uh, particular steps to demonstrate accountability as well as their commitment to ethical leadership and how the outcome of this case could also influence the, the future uh, positioning as well as messaging of the ANC as a governing party. You know, reputational battles are not won always in the court of law. It's about what, how, how much goodwill you want to have in the South African public in this particular case, in many other cases. So you might win a court of uh, a case on technicalities in the future, but the image that this, that this particular person has in South Africa is one who gets away with stuff that ordinary citizens do not get away with. She's not alone, of course. We know many, there are many others. So if they really care about gaining a, a, a bit more supportive um, um, sentiment. In the South African public, they need to say this person has done wrong, and this is a, these are the consequences. All right. South Africa, you know, what I'm and there are no consequences that 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 all consequences should be for before everybody, not just some people and not other people. Gentlemen, thank you so much for that uh, input. That is Mpumelelo Zigalala, legal analyst and uh, Solim Weng, a brand expert and a member of Action Essays Fix SA team for international relations.